Live from the Orion Signus Arm of the Milky Way Galaxy, this is Scientifically Speaking, a weekly half-hour program devoted to elegant curiosities, and I am one of your hosts, Sarah Chang. Joining me, as always, is Bernie Ryan, DJ Starwatcher. How are you, Bernie? Yes, hi, Sarah. Very good. Thank you. Bernie's our professor of the Astronomy Lab at USM and our local protector of the night sky. Reach out to us at WMPG Scientifically Speaking at gmail.com or on Twitter at WMPG SciSpeak. If you miss this show or any of your other favorite shows, you can log on to WMPG.org and find the last five weeks of archives and um, check, check it out. Bernie, could you let us let our listeners know what is up in the night sky for this coming week? Yes, certainly. Okay, so today is Friday, March 12th. So it's almost a new moon, technically a waning crescent coming up just before the sun. But um, it's basically a new moon, so you won't be able to see it. However, there's some planets you can still see. Uh, Mars is basically the only evening planet, which has been for a while now. And then the other planets are in the morning. You can see Jupiter and Saturn. They're getting a little further apart. They've switched to the morning sky about a month ago. And then Mercury will still be with them also. The only one you cannot see is Venus. Uh, you basically lost that because it's close to superior conjunction which means it's near the sun, just furthest away from us. It would be totally full if we could see it, but it's also smallest in the sky. And then we're gonna, it's gonna be missing for another couple of weeks, and then it's gonna show up again as an evening planet. So that's basically what's going on for this week. Awesome, thanks Bernie. You're welcome. And if you couldn't take notes fast enough, you can also check out the monthly What's Up column in the Portland Press Herald. Today's show is all about the main spaceport. We welcome Seth Lockman from Blue Shift Aerospace here to talk about this as a kind of exciting coverage of what's happening in Maine and in the aerospace industry in Maine coming up in, in the future following the successful first launch of Stardust One, the first rocket that has been um, launched with biofuels. So enjoy. You guys launched Stardust One at the Loring Commerce Center, the former Loring Air, Sp Air Force Base. But the other kind of really cool endeavor that's happening is the main spaceport. But that's looking at building this launch site, this um, launch and re-enter from space site in at the Brunswick Air Airstrip, right? Uh, former Brunswick Am I using all the right words? <laughs> yeah, so Maine has a tremendous amount of Cold War infrastructure. We've got a satellite downlink. We've got two over-the-horizon back scatter sites. We have the former Brunswick Naval Air Station, now Brunswick Landing. We've got the former Loring Air Force Base, now Loring Commerce Center. Uh, we've got um, the old sub-hunter station out of, uh, what was that, Win Winter Harbor, I think. And uh, we still actually have uh, an antenna site for uh, talking to, to submarines. Uh, not to mention Bath Ironworks, Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, and let's see, what, Pratt and Whitney out in uh, Berwick? Berwick? North Berwick. Yep. North Berwick, yeah. So, uh, and that's, uh, and so that's all dating back to the Cold War. That's, that's all before you get to this kind of uh, prolif uh, proliferation is maybe not the right word to be using here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the, the emergence of new space uh, here, here in Maine. So uh, the Maine Space Grant Consortium is thinking, okay, so we've got all these amazing educational programs. You know, we've got the Center for Undergraduate Research at UMaine. We've got uh, USM just rolled out a CubeSat a fabrication lab. Um, uh, the, there's the Tech Place Business Incubator at the Brunswick Landing. And those are those, those those are just the highlights. I mean, there is there are a lot of really wonderful education initiatives and programs in the works. Excuse me, uh, not just for aerospace, but um, all kinds of well, unmanned aerial systems. Call it aerospace. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, they're not rockets, but you know. <laughs> so, uh, so the thought is, let's partner all of this together and let's come with it up with a kind of a distributed network uh, of a spaceport. Um, which is kind of how NASA winds up doing things too. Um, so Brunswick would be kind of like the Houston in the in the okay. uh, report. So you have mission control there, uh, data storage and processing, uh, the business incubator, uh, 
the probably the educational programs would be based out of Brunswick, um, just because kind of more proximal to most of the state's population. And you could do horizontal launch off of the runway. So you could either have an aircraft doing those, you know, kind of parabolic arcs, like uh, like they call it the vomit comet, right? <laughs> um, and you can do that for tourism or for research or uh, or for astronaut training. I mean, you know, if, if uh, Jess and Chris ever want to just, you know, join us for a flight, that would be tremendous. Um, so you could do those sorts of things out of Brunswick. Now, uh, up in Limestone, uh, that's where it starts to get remote enough to start doing vertical rocket launch, but you can't really go very high. For pretty much anything bigger than what we did, uh, probably you want to be looking at a coastal site. Um, but there are some amazing state-of-the-art facilities up here. Um, and you could still do horizontal launch off of an airplane. You could use a balloon that goes up and then just drops a payload. Although uh, we are kind of close to Canada, so probably we'd want some sort of propulsion on the balloon. You wouldn't want just like a pure raccoon, <laughs> which is a, uh, a rocket launched under slung from a balloon. Um, yep. But we, uh, we know that Loring was home to a, a, a test blimp for many years. Oh, so, no way. Yeah. So, uh, it would take very little refurbishment to bring back um, something like that. Um, so, uh, so there are there are other types of horizontal launch, other types that are even covered by NASA's Flight Opportunities Program. Um, also, there's really really high speed internet here. I mean, the 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 cell phone and wireless and and wired internet, all three of those things are better at my hotel here on the base, uh, which is wow. Has, that's where I am here, uh, then at home, just outside of Portland, Maine. Um, and there are a lot of offices that are just waiting for people to move in. Our, our uh, field office that the Loring Development Authority gave us to, uh, to conduct our launch out of was probably a little nicer than even the, the one in Brunswick. I mean, this, there's really, really nice facilities up here. Um, and, and that's to say nothing of R&D and manufacturing. Um, the, the main military authority has a couple of uh, vacant buildings up here still, and there, I got to uh, I got to tour a jet engine kind of testing facility, and it had probably the thickest doors that I've ever experienced. <laughs> um, but it, you know, you you could adapt that pretty easily for a horizontal test stand for uh, for a rocket engine, or or bring a jet engine. You know, the main has another rocket company that that's working on an air breathing engine, um, so there you know this so Loring could pretty easily become the kind of like the Edwards Air Force or the, or the like the Mojave of of New England yeah uh, in terms of you know this is this is where all the crazy stuff happens Got an engine too big to test in Brunswick bring it on up to Limestone we're gonna have some fun um so that you know that that's where Loring has such a a, a promising future and and also they're like 10 minutes away from my old high school the main science uh main school of science and math and I think I would know this because it's my old high school, <laughs> the main school of science and mathematics. There we go. Uh, so it, it just seems like, you know, between them and Umpy, just a couple minutes further down the road, it's, it's just like, uh, is begging for its own uh, incubation up here. And um, we've already got the, the Loring Job Corps up here. And, um, oh, what else? Damn it. Isn't it also the site of some of the biggest fish concerts? Used to be. Yeah, Used to it was be. Little, no more. Little, little crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they have they have races up here in the um in the Seems summer. Very multi purpose. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's that, that's such a dynamic runway because sometimes that runway is open for airplanes to land on it. And sometimes there are cars racing on it, and sometimes there are rockets launching on it. I mean, that's a very that's a that's a busy run. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a Renaissance runway, and that's going to be the name of my next band. Right there. <laughs> Renaissance <laughs> runway. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah. I can already hear kind of the blast off the the sound of you know a rocket blasting off. That's that's your intro to your to one of your songs. Yeah, yeah, abs every <laughs> every song actually. <laughs> every, every single, single song. song. Just, Can I just ask? Rocking. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah. the Loring. This is a little uh, a, a bit of a tangent, but the the Loring Commerce Center 
that was not initially built to be a rocket launch site, was it? Oh, no, no. The Learning okay. Commerce Center is maintained by the Learning Development Authority, and their mission is to revitalize the base as mm -hmm. after it was shut down. Similar to the Midcoast Regional Redevelopment Authority in Brunswick, uh, LDA is all about um, finding anchor tenants. And, uh, you know, when the base shut down in 94, and then I think uh, Carl Flora stepped into his role as president and CEO in 94, Five. I don't know if that's when LDA was founded, but around that time, right, were they picturing, well, we're going to have a spaceport up here and we'll be the, you know, we'll, we'll be the, the, the R&D place. And, um, and yeah. uh, no, I don't, I don't think anybody was really thinking about spaceport name uh, up until 2017. Um, but at, at this point, they've been really open to, to it. They've been absolutely amazing. Their, their hospitality Carl, Carl Flora and Neil Haynes of the Learning Development Authority were as integral to making this launch happen as any member of Blue Shift. Were they and, there? Sorry? Were they there at your launch? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, uh, just simple things like, like, like uh, plowing the runway or making sure that we had a, you know, the first time we had to scrub for weather. And so it became quickly like, oh, God, where can we put the rocket? And they, yeah. and they had a hangar. We, we were able to make it work. Um, and, and, you know, lending us the field office to use and, and everything like that. Um, they were, uh, they were, they were just terrific. So um, it's uh, sad that we'll probably never be back to launch. We might be back for R and D if that works out in the future. Um, but there are still many, many other opportunities up here, many other types of suborbital flight and many other Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say. Uh, they also have facilities for data storage and processing. Mm. Um, so everything doesn't have to be piped through uh, Brunswick, um, it, it, at least in theory. Yeah. So um, yeah, so there, there are a lot, a lot of opportunities up here. And this isn't like, uh, this isn't like Cape Canaveral. This isn't like Spaceport America where you have to go build something. It's, it's here. You could land a 737 on the runway right now. Uh, we should probably refurbish one of the hangars a little bit just to, you know, give the 737 a place to go. Um, but, you know, the, the infrastructure is already here. The programs are largely already here in Loring and in Brunswick. Now, for companies like Blue Shift, where we're doing vertical launch, and especially, especially if we're going to go to orbit, you need ocean overflight. You cannot have a rocket flying mm -hmm. over I-95 <laughs> or houses on the coast. That's just that's just not an option. Uh, so we uh, we really want to see a down east launch site uh, off the coast to attract vertical launch companies. And you could still stage the mission um, out of depending on which direction you're headed to get there. You could still stage the mission out of uh, Loring or Brunswick, um, but uh, the 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 launch itself would be from the coastal down east site. Yeah, yeah. So we we got to set probably I think this is a world first, the world's first recovery of a of a launch vehicle by snowmobile. <laughs> and so our next launch we hope will be the world's first recovery of a of a launch vehicle by lobster boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, and Seth, haven't you worked on lobster boats before? I worked on tugboats for a short time. You worked on this, so you could, you could, you could drive one. Oh yeah, yeah. No, driving a, I could drive a boat. Yeah, sure. Yeah, is it called driving a boat? <laughs> that, Absolutely not. <laughs> is it steering? What do you, what do you call it? Piloting, <laughs> Piloting a boat. Yep. Yeah, I worked on boats in New Orleans for four years. Oh, oh, so you could you could well, uh, recruit yeah, yeah you can recruit Bernie yeah 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 I'll I'll helm the thing and you'll you'll you know do, cleat the the lines and everything with you know make fast the the rocket yeah. you know a baft or or what have you yeah yeah well that's super exciting um yeah. where uh where are we in the process of making Spaceport Maine happen right right because I have to <laughs> enough yet <laughs> so, so uh right now um notwithstanding just the the things that the various stakeholders are up to 
um, you know, as, as far as you know, coordinating all of it on the on the on the macro level. Uh, the Spaceport Leadership Council has been assembled. They're developing a business plan and a strategic plan. They're going to submit it to the state uh, at the end of the year. And uh, our next steps are going to depend on, on what's in the report. Uh, it's, the, it's the kind of stuff I, I find really fascinating. And a lot of people are, you know, they, they just kind of want to leave it at Schoolhouse Rock. But um, <laughs> I, I got to I got to see uh, LD2092, which was the bill to create the committee, go through the Legislative Council, Revisor's Office, um, the Maine's uh, Joint Standing Committee on Idea B. Let's see, Innovation, Development, uh, Economic Advancement, and Business. Nice. Nice job. Oh, my God. I feel like Neo in the Matrix, like, I know Kung Fu. I think I <laughs> did that. Yeah. I think I just did. And if I didn't do it, I know someone's going to fact check me. I think I just did that. <laughs> okay, moving on. So um, anyway, the, the bill ultimately got backburnered and then just didn't make it to the to the floor, even though it had unanimous bipartisan support, which like how, how many bills these days have unanimous bipartisan support, right? Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, it didn't make it through because the, that was that was my last day out in public without a mask on. And so the entire state government basically pivoted to focus on coronavirus, um, which was, you know, it, as it should be, that that's the most important thing to get through this now. Um, so we wound up uh, we wound up securing the funds to create the the leadership council in other ways. But I'm I know the state's going to continue to be involved with the spaceport down the line. Yeah. How uh, how involved are you and Sasha and Blue Shift in in this? Uh, well, Blue Shift is definitely a, a, a stakeholder. We're in, a, we're in an affiliate of the Main Space Grant Consortium, and uh, Sasha was on the steering committee, which is kind of okay. the earlier version of the Spaceport Leadership Council. Um, I don't uh, I don't know what his involvement is with the Leadership Council right now. That's something that we just haven't talked about because <laughs> for months this has been it. You know, this is tunnel yeah. vision. I um uh I, I I really have since since September, I've only been made aware of, of major world events by by way of other people's incredulity or <laughs> or kind of like their Facebook posts. I can kind of guess what's happening, you yeah. know. But I've really, really just had my head in the sand because it's just all stardust all the time. So I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, stumbling out into the light here. Um, <laughs> so is he on the leadership council? I don't know. We were talking about stardust. That's that's the best I've got. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so, so basically they're in the process of identifying uh, launch sites uh, on the coastal down east. So we'll have to we'll have to sync up with them once we can announce uh, what, what we've found. And uh, because you know we just want everybody to 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 be on the same page there, um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what's in the development plan, and uh, I I hope, and this is just my opinion here, but I really hope we're able to move quickly on developing launch capabilities, because if we lose out, there are a number of regional powers is kind of a dramatic way to put it but we are very literally in a space race with georgia michigan wisconsin scotland sweden nova scotia right next door um and uh also alaska with kodiak uh, which is in operation now um so there are a number of places um, that are vying to become the place to to launch for you know for nano launch to launch your small rocket mm. with small sat payloads, and I think we have a really really good shot with our high latitude south facing coastline and all of that infrastructure uh, that I was talking about before. Yeah. I think we have a really really good shot in Maine to become the cheapest, best place to launch to to polar and sun synchronous orbit 
uh, with the best customer service because you know there's hardware stores and hotels you know within convenient drives of all of these sites um, but we have to move decisively because if people are developing you know lines of logistics out to these other spaceports they're not going to want to start from yeah square one again or they or they might but it's going to take time so i think that moving really really decisively to develop those launch abilities um, is going to be critical to the success of the spaceport wow the pressure is on yes yes it is you heard it here on wmpg 90.9 it is. So if you're listening, <laughs> that's incredible. Um, I wonder if we should change our state motto, state tagline to the way launches should be. Citizen life. <laughs> Bernie got but it. Launches are the way life should be, though. Yeah. <laughs> also, I hope that they keep the motto. I really want the motto of the spaceport to be Ad Astra Dirigimus. Okay, or that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to the stars with what? Ad Astra Dirigimus. Yeah. To to the stars with what? We lead to the stars. Oh, we lead to the stars. Yeah. 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 Very nice. I know, right? I would take credit for it, but the state really got that ball rolling uh, <laughs> a couple of years back, a year ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So I, while I think the, the launch capabilities are, are critical, you know, all of it, all of it's critical if you want to vertically integrate it, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the downlink, the data storage and processing, the, the security, the, um, you know, the, the, the educational outreach and, and making sure that we're coordinating with in-state educators. Um, it's, it's a really, really comprehensive holistic approach that the main space grant consortium has been kind of spearheading and it's been really exciting to see. Yeah. Where can folks learn more about the main space grant consortium? Well, they have a website now. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can just, just Google main space grant just consortium. Yeah. Uh, consortium is, is spelled C O N S O R T I U M. And so you can learn about what the, you know them and what they're up to. Uh, they're, they've, they've got uh, also internships for high school and undergrad. Um, so those are those are really uh, really important resources for someone that's you know trying to jumpstart their their professional development. Um, Blue Shift has on our website. If you if you go to our homepage and scroll all the way down, then you'll get to a page about Spaceport Maine, and it's got links to a whole bunch of supporting documents, including the uh, the steering committees. A feasibility study or at least a review of it um, as well as the language of LD 2092 um, and the spaceport itself will have uh, a website soon. Exciting. That's yeah. so exciting. It really is. I know, right? <laughs> We're going to beat Nova Scotia in a space race. And you'll Let's be able to see too that you're racing against. Sorry? And all the other states you mentioned that you're racing against. Yeah, and and the the, the funny thing is I I'm uh, uh, well I I hope he thinks of me as, I think of him as a friend I hope he thinks of me as a friend. Um, but through Space Day, I got to meet uh, Brian Ewanson over at Spaceport Sheboygan, hmm. and um, yeah. I I even interviewed him for for the show. Yeah, I talked to him again at the the Johnson Space Center where you were going to go in February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I talked. I had dinner with him there, and and um, Sharon Eggleston. Yeah, yeah, Sharon's the best. Um, but yeah, so we're uh, we're um, Spaceport Sheboygan is one of the uh, you know they're doing suborbital launch uh, right now, mostly at the college level. Um, so they're 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 ahead of you know Definitely. Spaceport Maine for the time being. But we we uh, they they want to get to orbital launch. We want to get to orbital launch. Um, so. Uh, Brian, if if you're listening, race ya. <laughs> oh, race. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what our space grant consortia can do, respectively. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Bernie, I had a question for you. Because yes. you you bought a car and then drove how far to to catch the Great American Eclipse? Oh yeah, I drove over two thousand miles one way. I did almost seven thousand miles for the whole trip. And you so could further than Sarah. 
for the launch of Stardust 1.0. Oh, okay. Um, well, I thought that was a <laughs> go there. I would have gone up there, but you to go unless you were like specially invited or something. Yeah, I thought we weren't allowed yeah, you to told go. Me basically, that I shouldn't go up there. No, you guys are press. Oh. Okay, we'll go up to the next one. No, you I didn't thought... officially invite us. Yeah. I added WMPG scientifically speaking at gmail.com to the Google event. Well, yeah, I saw that, but I thought that was just for the live stream. Yeah. I didn't think that was an invite to actually go there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, it said in there. It, if, if, you, if you click on the thing, mm -hmm. it opens up your Google Maps and tell, tells you where to go. Oh. Hmm. Wow. I okay. Well, next time. Get, I'm sorry. That's, that's my fault. Is... You should have, like, written a letter to me. <laughs> called us. Oh, I wish. Oh my God, you know, okay, so using scheduling software, first of all, maybe this is not the most important part of the, of, of the historic, like Maine's first commercial rocket launch, first commercial rocket launch powered by biodrive fuel anywhere in the world, right? Okay, so that's, that's the thing to focus on. But over in my corner, I was trying to find a good scheduling software <laughs> that supported rescheduling something like six times. Because like, if, if, you're, if you're like on Eventbrite and you're trying to do a concert or something, right? And you're like, it's going to be at 10 a.m. No, it's going to be at 11 a.m. No, it's going <laughs> to be that. At, you know, 1245 a.m. And then, but, and then you do that uh, two times. But, but then those, those are the times that you're actually like there in person streaming, right? Like, because, uh, because Eventbrite, we kept like bumping it back and bumping it back. And uh, it, it didn't update people's Google calendars. So if you update the Eventbrite and someone created a Google calendar reminder, hey, the launch is today, nothing happens to that reminder. No. So what I what I had to do is the quickest fix was I just invited everybody to a Google Calendar event so that I could just drag it and everyone get an email <laughs> that it had been rescheduled. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I'll do for our next launch is find, excuse me, one of the things I'll do for our next launch is, is find a scheduling software that supports uh, yeah. rescheduling multiple times. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> important for startup companies yeah yeah although it did get me thinking is there a reason that we couldn't have a concert at a launch combine it perfect no it's covid over yeah. like nasa doesn't do it but yeah but what but is there a reason that it can't be done like everybody's there mm -hmm. and you could have a concert yeah and and then you and you just do like a lineup of bands and then they either play before the launch or then after the flight you know then they then you have like a quick intermission and then they come and play after either yeah. or uh, yeah Why not? Like that, could be, that could be a lot of fun huh yeah. have a barbecue oh my god after covid i want to see people tailgating <laughs> uh, i mean yeah, you know, drink right. responsibly, please but i want to see people like you yeah know, rocket launch tailgate i like flipping that burgers on their back of their yep. truck yeah absolutely I think you should uh you should plan it. We can um if you can make it so that we can camp on the on the launch strip. You know, at a safe distance fish, away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you know the best part is when you actually launch, the mm -hmm. bird's eye view will 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 show all the tents flying away because of... <laughs> <laughs> you should blow it out. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go that far. Maybe that's like that can be one of the experiments. Like who can who can tie their tent down the best? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if your backstage <laughs> pass is in the exclusion zone. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, I love it. You're laughing. I love your um heart attack. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> would um would Sasha be on board with the the launch concert? Um yeah, I mean I I voiced it to him and he didn't immediately shut it down. If you did it at Loring, you should have invited Fish back. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> no, um, but but yeah. So, so sorting out. You call it Bluefish uh, Aerosmith. Oh my god. Bluefish. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. But so one thing that occurs to me too is like depending on how close we wind up launching to uh, Acadia, which of course it would be a safe distance, but maybe it's close enough to have a launch viewing on the on top of Cadillac Mountain. Oh. like a night launch from Cadillac, yeah. you know, 
That'd be that would crazy. Be, huh. Seth Lockman, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you can learn more at blueshiftaerospace.com. And uh, thank you so much for joining Bernie and I, coming back and joining us. Yeah. Thanks for listening to me talk. <laughs> that's what our show is for. I guess that's literally what the show is for, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to listen to us. Are you kidding? <laughs> I listened to you guys for like four years. You're not, just now we're finding out no one. <laughs> Some say we have to do our own show, but we try to get guests on like yourself. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, your voice is definitely one that has been sorely missed. So oh. thank you so much for coming back and, and joining us and you know, sharing, sharing all the exciting things that are happening with Blue Shift, with the space sport and with um, aerospace in Maine. It's, um, it's really been uh, a point of pride for us, I think, to have been colleagues of yours and um, to see you, you and Blue Shift and Sasha grow so much in the past few years. So thank you so much, Sarah. We always appreciate when you come back and and talk about the things that you love talking about most. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to uh, my next rant about asteroid detection or, or what have you. <laughs> mm. okay. You've been listening to Scientifically Speaking here on WMPG with myself, Bernie, and the awesome, amazing, super califragilistic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Seth Lockwin from Blue Shift Aerospace. And, and you just got the song in there. <laughs> Stay tuned for Sports Jam with Colin and Connor. And from your favorite nerds, Mask Up, we wish you healthy bodies and clean air. 